because, of course, you've played at the highest levels of the game. Where are your thoughts on heading uh, and, and, and whether kids should be allowed to head in training? Well, I think what it is with the... It's, it's, a, it's in America, they've, they've banned the, the, the minors from heading the ball for the, for the last five years. Since 2015, mm. it's been totally banned. Um, and then as you move up lev under 11s, under 13s, they limit the amount of heading practices they do during the football sessions. But I believe, um, I think you, you have to listen to the experts. I think there's been findings. There is a link with dementia and... You know, dementia is linked to many other things as well. Sure. But they have found a link uh, with footballers mm. um, to dementia. It, it's, it's the head trauma. It's every time that ball hits against, you know, it's, it's, it's your brain. Do you worry for your own health in the future? I don't think... I, I don't particularly worry about it, Kate. I think you, you, it is what's going to happen to me will happen to me. I don't wake up in the morning and, and particularly worry about it. We know that Alan Shearer has come out and said, I mean, he headed the ball, was known for his heading of the ball particularly, mm -hmm. and he's really concerned that in later life he could have incurred some sort of brain injury from the amount that he headed. Well, I also had testicular cancer, so as you can see, I've got several scars on my head anyway, mm. so I've had quite a lot of... Unlike myself, my dad would stand in the back garden with me as a, as a, as a young lad, mm. eight, nine years of age, throw the ball up in the air, and I would continuously... I was bought, transferred in my career because I was a particularly good header of the ball. Yeah. But I don't particularly, as I said, get up in the morning and worry about long-term... So if no I'm gonna regrets? Get no, not really, but I think we, we've got to listen to these findings and, and these and this expert opinions. I think we've be, something's got to be done, and they're starting with under-12s, mm -hmm. the minors, because at 12 years of age, you can't really make that decision yourself. Mm -hmm. So well, I mean, you're, you're a mum of two boys, yeah. married to Tom. Yeah. Um, he presumably is showing no concern about it, but does hearing that, do you think, oh, I don't want Tom to do what your dad did? Um, and stand there in the garden and encourage them to do headers? Well, no, I don't. I mean, Tom doesn't do that, but I think, you know, it's in my kids' instinct to head the ball. I mean, we haven't taught our kids to head the ball, and I know my son's coaches, they don't... Um, under 12s, they don't encourage heading of the ball, but my youngest, who's 10, who's instinctively just got it in him, he's great in the air. He headers the ball a lot. It doesn't worry me. I mean, it was only a couple of years ago they were saying that um, kids shouldn't train on 4G AstroTurf because of the links to cancer, and now that's all disappeared. I mean, it's taken away a fundamental part of the game if you stop children heading the ball if they want to. I mean, if they want to move on to professional footballers and you've stopped them heading the ball into a certain age, when do they learn how to do that. I you think, know, that, yeah, I mean, the slight, I mean, the, the speculative links about 4G and a material reacting with, with, with humans uh, is a bit different to the actual, what we can say is genuine impact, that we know the brain is being impacted by the ball. We know it is, but... We as haven't Hillary, had enough information yet. We've not yet. had enough information to, like, completely then just stop a fundamental part okay. of a beautiful game. Let, let, let's, Patrick, you are... You've been a, a football coach for many years. Yeah. You have a number of teams. Yeah. How old are the kids that you look after? Uh, we start at two. Uh, they don't play matches at no, two. No, but, but they enjoy yeah, the yeah, game yeah, of being we, part yeah, of it. Yeah, we start at two and we go two to four. And you've, and but you've never encouraged 12. heading? Never encouraged heading. I mean... Would uh, you actively discourage it? Would you well, we do. stop it? Oh, we, we do. I mean, so throw-ons, for instance, we don't throw it on, we pass it on, yeah, or, or training games. Um, I've never been able to hit the ball correctly anyway. <laughs> and it's almost impossible to teach somebody to do something if you've never done it yourself. Sure, OK. Yeah. So it's a get-out clause for you. Yeah, 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 but the whole point being is that um, if you're going to do it, you should do it with a sponge ball. It's just about technique at the end of the day, yeah. So, so, so I, mean, in, I mean, it's an important part of the game. As John was saying, mm. he was known for his heading. Lots yeah. of footballers, it's a really valuable uh, integral Very part. few people can head the ball correctly. That's yeah. the whole point about it. So That's you'd why. rather take it out at that age because you can't do it or because you're nervous about the impact it might have? Well, with a kid line. who's, like, say, five years of age, yeah, if it is raining and even if you've got a size three ball, it's still going to be pretty heavy. Mm. And you can't teach a kid like that to do anything with the ball. I mean, Charlie, so normally if, it would just hit in the face. If technique and people don't do it that well, like you're saying, Patrick, mm. if, if technique is part of the issue, then you do teach heading. Is teaching them to do it correctly, could that be used to also protect absolutely. potential injury? Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the most important things, like Nicola said, it is a fundamental part of the game. You're not going to stop heading in football. Um, I mean... Yes, OK, not many goals are scored by heading. I think 
there was a stat that I heard earlier, 98% of goals are on the floor, yeah. which is absolutely true. But compare that to the amount of goals that are defended from, yeah, yeah from corners how, many, how many headers are made. It's Jan Vertonghen's game, it's Harry Maguire's game, is to head the ball clear. Yeah, um, 12-year-olds, they... they... I've very rarely got a game where the ball's in the air for but they are going seven to do it. 12 year olds. It's on the floor mm. all the time, basically. I've, I watch my, I watch, my, I watch my kids. head the yeah. balls all the time. And and I, I, how old are your boys, Nicola? Um, so, my eldest is nearly 14 and my youngest is nearly 10. I said he was 10, he's nearly and, 10. And it's a big part of their game, both of them. That at head 10 the as well. Because the thing is, what I find is at 10, trying to get the ball off the floor is tricky. At 14, they're really? all getting bigger. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Unless, I mean, it's the technique, but the ball could be heavy. But at 14, it's starting more because they're kicking the ball in the air and they're getting bigger. I well. mean, Nicola's right, because I coach under 13s, my boyfriend coaches um, under 10s. Yeah. Um, and we, we have always made sure... We don't actively encourage heading in training. There are elements of training where we do have to make sure that we are coaching the technique of heading because it is important. And if they're doing it wrong, then yes, it does become dangerous because they're going up for balls that they so can't. So does everything. Can't say but anything, 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 ball, anything in it. a game that you're it's doing impossible. wrong, anything in a football match you're doing wrong, if your players are tackling wrong, yeah. it, whatever Absolutely. they're doing, you have to teach them the correct technique. Teaching them to kick in rather than throw in in a match, it wouldn't be something that I'd want my kids to. Well, no. So be we're, what we do, so like we play ten-minute games mm. yeah, in training, so they're non-stop. So rather than as soon as the ball. Um, goes off, another ball comes straight back on again. Yeah. So we just get the kids to put the ball on the floor. Yeah, as I said, 99% of the children's games, yeah, the ball is passed into the back of the net by using your foot. I can remember playing, headed, and look, I'm, I'm sort of not as old as some of the, the sort of the, um, the cases that we're talking about, John, where the footballs were really, really heavy, but I can mm. remember playing rock-hard footballs, yeah. mm. freezing cold weather and, and whacking the head and getting a headache from heading mm. the ball. Mm. And I understand that the ball's flying really fast at you from quite high up as well. I wasn't a bad defensive header, mm. but an attacking header, I had a 50p head, do you know what I mean? It went off yes. everywhere, I couldn't yeah. control that. Yeah. However, understanding the impact that's having physically Logically, mm -hmm. is so fundamental to this because no one wants to think that they're damaging their children or even adults as well. Absolutely. So from your I, perspective, it's yeah. like it's not just that it, it hurts because it's going to hurt, it's whether that hurt is part of the rough and Quite. toughness of the game. I, th I that's think we have a duty of care to act mm. to this recent, you know, to the research. Yes. That's what we have as, as adults because it's very difficult for the under-12s to make them decisions themselves. They're, mm. they're minors, they're, they're yeah. 11, 12 years of age. 